Hi, hearties. Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. Today, I'm joined by a fellow admin. I'm Jen from Seattle. <laughs> and we're super excited today because we have a couple ladies who've been with the show for a long time. We've seen all their awesome behind the scene posts all these years. And for the first time, we get to chat with them and get to know them a little bit. So please welcome Jill Timos and Pam and Sue. Welcome, you guys. Hi. We're so excited to have you. We see all your awesome behind the scenes posts. So we're super excited to finally get to know you a little bit and hear about your work on What Calls the Heart. Um, so you brought a good, I want to, we want to talk a little bit about your history with the show. You've both been with the show since 2016. Is that right? Does that sound about right? Season four? It's hard to remember day, years, to be yeah. honest. It's more of like seasons we've done. Pam's been there a long time. Uh, me, I've been, I did season three, season five, season six, seven, nine. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. <laughs> and what about for you, Pam? Well, I started in season two, and I was uh, an additional assist for Jen Kaminsky, actually. Oh, yeah. And so I, yeah, started season two, and I know the Hardys are familiar with, with Jen from um, those previous years. And so I was her assistant, her first assist, and then I was Joanne Kinchella's assist, and oh. now I'm the head of department for the last few years. So it's yeah. been great. Season two to nine is it nine nine oh yeah. it's nine yes <laughs> wow. did the two of you know each other before you came to the show nope we nope. locked eyes <laughs> season three day one in the trailer and we've been together ever since <laughs> what were your first impressions of each other <laughs> um first impressions well uh for me um I noticed Pam and I, I just sort of like, oh, hi, my name is Jill. You know, um, I was assisting on that. I was the first assist on that show. And Shelly Jones was my um, HOD. And uh, I just kind of like, oh, hi, how are you? And she was, you know, quite, she was on the quieter side. And she was like, oh, I'm fine. And it wasn't until more the end of the season that we really started to like chat and talk a lot more. It was a, it was a big season and a lot was going on. And uh because it was my first season and Shelly's first season, we really were um, doing a lot of extra different things for the show. Um, and so uh, we didn't really get to like kind of bond until closer to the end. Yeah. So you got to kind of be the new kids together if you started around the same time. That's nice. Yeah. Exactly. So we're into season nine. So talk to us about season nine a little bit. How did it go for you? You're a couple seasons into COVID protocol now, right? So. Uh, did things kind of flow naturally during season nine or how'd it go? They flowed pretty naturally, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't, there wasn't really any hiccups. Um, we have such a great team behind us, like all of our producers. I mean, all of the girls that work with me, Jody Reed and Sandy Manch, they're like my team. I can't work without them. So uh, they're always there to help in any way with any kind of issue or whether it be COVID or whether it be, mm -hmm. um, any anything at all that my I couldn't do it without my team. This is definitely a team show. Um, it's it's hair heavy, so we are in the elements. So, um, but we didn't really have any kind of bumps because we have such a great production manager. You know, Michael Magnuson. He's so great. So, you know, there's nothing really that went awry. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah, there's been lots of communication, right, with um, updating protocols that I stay on top of as far as our, our processes with um, just taking things as it comes. It's, you know, it's always, uh, you kind of never know what's around the corner. So my team, Deneen and Kelly, um, they are just, I can communicate with them and, and let them know what is needed and what's required. And they are just like there for, for me in so many ways. Um, and I can have that trust with my actors that they feel taken care of, they feel healthy and safe. Um, and it comes down the line, like, like Jill said, Michael is always like an open book with everything that's going on, super communicative. So we always feel like we have the information that we can um, do the, our jobs to the best of our ability and, and roll with the punches, sort of say. Yeah. You mentioned your team members there. Do you each have, did I hear about three people each or? Uh, my two main ones, well, is Deneen Dale. She's, uh, 
she's my ride or die, we call it. Like we've been together for so many years. I love her to bits. She's such a talented makeup artist and she's, she can talk to anyone. She's, you know, she's able to be me if I can't be there. And to put your trust in someone like that is a really huge deal because they're a representation of, of you and your department. Um, and Kelly Newman, she's our, our main girl too. She's basically, um, she's our cast coverage. She's our runner. She's our delivery, per, you know what I mean? Like she's, a, she's an all around show. She's the best assistant. And um, I'm so lucky to have them for sure. Amazing. And for you, Joe, how many do you have? A couple? Um, I have two two main girls. So Jody Reed, she's she's also she's my right hand man. She's my key. So mm -hmm. if I need anything, she's there to step up to the plate and be me on set if I can't be there or in the trailer. Um, she she helps crazy amounts with like cast and like. In this, especially in this show, we have to be fast and we have to be efficient with our time. So we have to get hairdos and everything done. Like we, we want to do them in 30 minutes flat. So we really do push that envelope. And she's got 30 years of hair experience and, you know, working in salons and owning her own salon. So she knows everything there is to know about hair. So if I ever have a question or I'm trying to bump off ideas, she's perfect for that. And uh, Sandy, she does, she's, She's like the person to help out Jody or me whenever we're kind of fumbling around and trying to make things work. So she's there to kind of really help um, just balance out things from like, like Pam said, running back and forth from circus to set, picking things up or, and, and helping in any way she can, helping with all the background. She does all of our background, mm -hmm. make them look all really great. So yeah, so it's, it's without them, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I do for sure. Very cool. <laughs> Hardy's had tons of questions for you guys, so we're just going to kind of jump into it. Uh, oh, sure. Pam, <laughs> Pam Christensen Russell from Mesa, Arizona. Um, she is just loving Faith's new look. Um, Andrea has always been beautiful, um, but if you could tell us kind of more about this new, just kind of softer look that we're seeing. Yeah, so our Faith, she's She's the doctor now. She's our frontier doctor of the town. She is got this new responsibility and she is embracing it and she's taking care of all our people of Hope Valley. Um, and she's, yeah, she's basically living her best life, it looks like. Like she's just got her name on the door. And so I think this has been a really, this has been a really good new chapter for for her and I think um I think she shows such a strength and I think I love that it, you know it's her and she's she's able to rock this new job with such confidence it's just really fun to see and watch it play out this season for sure yeah she's just really kind of blossomed this season yeah. and just kind of yeah she's yeah. she's owning it <laughs> yeah Anything about we, the new hair, Jill? She's got the great new curls. <laughs> she does have great new curls, yes. Um, that was a really fun idea, actually, that both me and her were talking in the chair one day. And she was like, well, you know, I just feel like, you know, she's she's coming into her own and, and I want to sort of show that. And I was like, well, why don't we, let's change her hair. And she was like, yes, let's do it. She's always so enthusiastic. She's so great. <laughs> So uh, I emailed John Tinker, who was our um, our showrunner, and uh, he was like, yeah, this is a great idea. I love it. So uh, he wrote it in for us. And uh, yeah, and, and, and it, honestly, it was it's fun to do. It's fun to create and change and alter a little bit sometimes things that are established just because it makes for something new and fresh, right? Because a lot of the time, too, you know, four months of doing the same thing same kind of looks every day it's just nice to have a little bit of a change right it brings a new freshness to the table well and with <laughs> Carson Carson leaving you know mm -hmm. what what happens when a guy leaves a girl does something different to her hair <laughs> so, that's all. right that's right it's so great honestly like having the barber shop like uh, I'm sure you guys have seen like the di different looks and like people changing it up or like you know season eight like we saw some different stuff and it's so neat to have the barbershop in town because it, it shows that the girls are at play, right? 
and yeah, what do girls really. do when they get together a lot of them do hair and makeup or they mm -hmm. you know have these beauty nights or it's just really fun to see and watch the girls in the town like you'll be like oh oh she's got a oh she's got a little swoop there or she's <laughs> or she's pinned back or and you know that the barbershop's now a staple in the town so it it does it is this fun little like there are these fun little easter eggs around where you can see changes in the town which is it's fun because our our, uh, our girls are so established right there's every character has their their job and their um situation right so it's fun to see like when they've maybe been at play a little bit i'm switching gears now over to kevin mcgarry because mm. the hardys had all the questions <laughs> about Kevin, um, from his mustache to uh -huh. his hair to uh, the mustache was a very hot topic at the beginning of the <clears throat> season. Um, so Margaret from Randolph, Massachusetts wants to know how you kept our Mountie looking so fabulous this season. Um, it's not hard to make Kevin look good. Let's not miss here, okay. Uh, he's so, so wonderful to work with. Um, he's just got the best energy, he comes in the trailer, and it's just, we constantly just chat back and forth and, you know, make funny comments, and it's really fun. But for his, you know, looking fresh, I mean, there's not a lot to do. So uh, for me, I just give him a, a cleanup, like a trim or something specific, like um, he, he likes to wear his hair a little bit longer. So I, I let that slide. And uh, uh, we just, honestly, it's so easy. To, he has, it's just like you see on camera, he has luscious hair and it's, uh, I do have to tame it. The only thing I would say is he, I call him, he likes to put his hands through his hair a lot. So I will go and set him for a scene and he'll decide that, oh, you know, he, it's sort of like a, it's kind of like a tick. No one really realizes they're doing it. And then I'm always like, oh, stop touching your hair. I just said it. And so uh, <laughs> me running out on set and, you know, our director laughing because I'm scowling at him being like, stop touching it. Stop touching it. I just said it. So, uh, you know, there's funny moments like that. So, but fresh just a trim I keep him just set and um yeah that's about it did you know about the mustache ahead of the season going I in? have a funny story about the mustache oh, yeah. so <laughs> some people don't know this but it's actually makeup department that is in charge of uh facial hair so beards oh. and mustaches eyebrows nose ears neck all those front of neck mind you not the back it's like this uh that's our zone so Kevin comes in the trailer full stash and I thought he was joking I was like ah ha ha come sit down like this is so good it looks awesome like but I'm thinking this is his summer stash and he's like he's like no no I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm wearing it on the show and I was like you're joking <laughs> nobody told me about this so I think he's joking the whole time I did not believe him so we're sitting there fighting and he's saying it with a smile on his face because he he can't we're both laughing because he's like trying to get it out that it's actually gonna play and I'm like not believing him like we're it's like a brother sister relationship I'm like Kevin get your ass in the chair and we're getting this caterpillar off your face Mountie he's our clean mount I'm like I'm all rattled and he's like no no he's like I've already, we've, I've already, and finally he's getting out his story after laughing so much. He's like, <laughs> no, he's like Peter Deloise, our um, amazing director, you guys probably know, Peter and I, John, and uh, he's like, no, we're gonna, we're, it's gonna play. And so I'm like, I've got to Google this. I'm Googling, yes, all, Mounties had this, this facial hair specific mustache. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I think this is great. I think as long, I was just terrified that it wasn't approved by uh, the powers that be, right? So I was like, I can't let you out of the trailer right. until I actually have, uh, I, until I actually hear myself. So I'm firing off emails and all this kind of stuff and sending pictures. And uh, it was Kevin that, um, 
just, yeah, it was a brilliant idea because like you said earlier, Jen, where it's people go through changes uh, after, you know, love or loss or um, chain um, career, like it's just a way, it's always been a, a way of self-expression. And uh, he, it was actually Kevin's idea that he would play it out. So he worked through, I believe he worked through the scene um, with uh, our little Allie, Jada, that that was Kevin's idea that it would be her that's like, you, you, you can just be yourself. You don't need to change or do this. Um, you know, cause Jill and I were saying earlier, I remember when my dad shaved his mustache as a little girl, I was like, Whoa, what, who are you? This is like, you need to get that thing back. Like you got to grow that mustache back. Like you look like a different person. So it was funny to see and beautiful that they had this moment where, you know, things are, it's always going to be you and I, and we can, you know, we can still like have friendship and love in these other ways. Um, but we don't need to change our, ourselves. And, and so that was, yeah, that was, it was Kevin's idea. I think it was great. It played beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful moments I've seen this season, actually. It was really special. So yeah, the whole mustache, we, uh, I had, a, a special comb and I, we made it a big thing on set where I would present him with his mustache comb. And we had about probably 15 to 30 nicknames. The top ones was gravy grabber, soup strainer, uh, shoe shiner, shoe shiner. Um, the list goes on. You get the picture. So I'd always be like, give that old gravy grabber a, a run through. So then he would sit there and put his lips out and really just really take this moment. And I had four other girls to do so I was like okay <laughs> let's get to it oh my goodness that is so so we had a we had a yeah and then we would color it slightly because it was all facial hair there's like variations of tone and of course there's like sort of a, a blonde blondish streak so we would color it in the morning and trim it and make sure and then he would do this <laughs> and it was it was fun it was you know um, any change is good on a four-month show right so we we had some fun the stash though that was that's and so we great. did a whole do you guys know um instagary oh yeah oh yeah so oh, yeah. instagary <laughs> jill and i put a mustache on him in the trailer one day and we have some special footage of mcgarry and instagary in their sunglasses with both rock and the mustache. So maybe uh, remind me in the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll send you guys a video. <laughs> it's to die for. It's so I feel fun. like some of that made the light of day. Did one of them share that? I, I feel like it did. Them. Was it yeah. a photo? Okay. I, uh, I oh, saw just it in a my, photo, not a video. In, yeah, my, but... in my photos, I have some, some video, uh, but I, maybe I'll wait for Kevin. Maybe he was wanting to post it first. Yeah. Oh, we'll much. see. Right. yeah the mustache was uh it was a hilarious time and he <laughs> honestly he looks good in it I think he he could wear it both ways I think <laughs> yeah I like that so going back a bit talking about the show kind of finding its identity there was such a difference between season one and season two and it was you know it went through some growing pains of finding the looks for the cast members back then and now we've kind of settled into that. You're, you're dealing with a period piece in the 1900s, but then it's also on Hallmark. So you have, you know, you want some glam with Hallmark and you want uh, the beauty to come through of all the cast. So can you talk a little bit about balancing the network expectations along with, you know, a period piece trying to be accurate and things like that? Absolutely. And um, yeah, we see uh, comments online like, this is not accurate. This is not historically. They'd be like Jen said, uh, you know, dirty and sweaty and full of lice and whatever. <laughs> but um, it, it is, it's always a balancing thing. We want the, the true beauty of the women to come through. And it's a very quaffed, uh, smooth aesthetic with Hallmark. So we're always trying to um, make sure the network is satisfied with the beauty that's coming through and um, keeping our cast in their character 
looks and as well as um, having fun and a little bit of play with, with our party scenes where we can bump the ladies up where naturally, you know, they know they would be out selling just as we would go out for dinner or celebrate, we would put on a different, you know, piece of jewelry or some, some blush that night or um, a little bit of lipstick or another coat of mascara, let's say. So, I mean, historically, I feel like that still would have happened, these, these bump ups for these special events. So it's always um, having uh, really small movements that kind of show that and then because we're outside in the in the daylight for a lot of our scenes, um, makeup can basically not look like it's even on the skin or on the eyes or the lips. So we do have to play around with lighting and uh, different sets of uh, how um, people's facial um, shapes and expression is going to come through, especially with the ladies. So. Uh, in order to showcase that, we do have to uh, do a bit of liner and uh, brow and mascara to bring out the eyes, bring out the color in the cheeks and a natural flushing of the lips. So we, we try to do subtle ways to, to show the beauty and then bump them up for our celebrations as any woman should. <laughs> but yeah, great question. Cause um, we definitely have a beautiful, uh, ensemble of women and I just think that they are going to shine bright no matter how much makeup or what we do with them so um we just we put it all in one spot and we have fun with it and and speaking of period pieces we talked to Kevin this uh this week this year already and he talked a lot in depth we talked a lot about the makeup and hair <laughs> because nice. of the because of the great costume uh, episodes this season. And Jill, he said you really enjoyed doing his hair. So how was it working with him in the chair? <laughs> uh, he is, he's very fun. Sort of like a no nonsense, he comes in. Okay, are you ready for me, Jill? Oh, Pam, Pam, you ready for me? You know, he's just, he sits in his chair and you, you know, you start him. He doesn't really like to kind of like sit around. He likes to sort of get things done. So um, I got to spend a little bit more time with him this season, which was obviously more fun. I've done a few movies with him, but it's always fun to spend more time with Gavin. And um, creating his curls was quite fun, especially when I started to do it. He's like, I, I, what are you doing? And, and especially Pascal came over and she was laughing so hard. And she's like, I got to take pictures of this. And I think she posted a couple of him like going like, ah, with his hair, like all curled funny. Um it was really fun to create his his Romeo and Mark Anthony. Um, there was a lot of we we had to do a lot of figuring out what what kind of look we were trying to go for and what Peter DeLuise wanted to do um, and and what John Tinker thought as well. So um, we played quite a bit to figure out what how it was going to go, and uh, I'm really happy with the outcome. I think it turned out really great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's fun. You said you laughed the whole time while you were doing this curl. Yes. <laughs> it was so hard because it was like yeah. <laughs> I'm using this iron that's really small. So it's like I'm creating oh. these like little tiny curls and he's just like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> so, well, he said the time was like, you know, double or triple what he usually has to do in the chair. So <laughs> yeah, he's in my chair like five minutes usually. Yeah. So it was like at least a good 30, 35 maybe. Yeah. Wow. So he was like. You know, like, okay, you're almost done. Yeah, you're almost done. No, nope. oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, ready to go. Time's going. <laughs> That's right. Oh, too fun. All right. So let's talk about the wigs and extensions because there are a lot of beautiful heads of hair in Hope Valley. Um, <laughs> some of it's there, some of it's not. Um, <laughs> what's uh, kind of like the care and the grooming? There's got to be a whole lot that goes along with all of that. Um, and Debbie uh, Kolsnick from Pittsburgh is really interested in um, Aaron's long hair. So when it comes to like adding in hair and things like that, I mean, the weather is a big, um, because we're in Vancouver, it rains a lot. Um, maintaining curls um, and all that kind of stuff, like it, it helps to have pieces that we can add to create looks um, and they last longer that way. They don't get as frizzy as like normal hair? 
Exactly. Okay. It's different. I mean, it's, it's still real hair, so it still mm-hmm. has the, it will get frizzy eventually, but we can set it in a way where, um, you know, we, we don't want to damage the actor's hair either, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to hold the iron Absolutely. for too long. So that's something you have to take into consideration. So when we're adding in um, hair and stuff like that, it's usually just to create the look so that it lasts longer. Um, Erin in particular, we just add in some hair to, to give her some length and, that's pretty much it. I mean, um, the way I style it, I mean, I use my one inch iron and, and, uh, you know, it's just like very loose curls and then I brush it out and, um, she has, she's had a particular style. It's been established for, you know, almost since season two. So, um, Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of altering and changing necessarily with her look just because, you know, that's Elizabeth. Right. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not coming in there as a head of department to all of a sudden change because I'm, you know, the new person on the block or whatever. So um, I keep, I want to keep that m- sort of continu- continuity going throughout the whole thing. So honestly, yeah, it involves a lot of, um, you know, curling pieces, you know, rewashing them, restyling them, getting them all ready. Um, Cause of course, like I said, we have to do things in a timely fashion. So um yeah, for her hair, I, all I do is just, just add in some hair and some some length there, and it and it works out great. And she loves it, and that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Pascal had said in one of our interviews that you guys were super instrumental in helping kind of come up with the whole rosemary look. So, um, could you share a little bit about what you remember about that? Or sure. Um, so particularly like doing her. Um, Cleopatra look that was quite fun so we had I was looking at a lot of different pictures and Peter DeLuise was very particular on how he wanted her hair to look and he didn't want to have it too short he didn't want to have it too long um you know he wanted to sort of add some things to it but then of course um Barbara had this beautiful headpiece that she found which was fantastic so I didn't really have to add anything extra to the hair um, but it was really fun to try on these, like, so I had a couple of different black wigs that we got Pascal to try on. And uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen the photographs where she took, um, you know, where we were fitting them on and stuff. And it, and it had to be, especially with wigs, like sometimes a lot of the time they don't s- sit snugly sometimes. So, um, I, it's kind of funny how you have to like sort of maneuver the hair to try and fit perfectly. And then with the hat on top, cause Pascal has quite a bit of hair, I have to kind of like sort of move it around to try and shift it. Um, But that was really fun to do that. And then of course, with her, um, her Juliet look, making her hair extra, extra long, that was really fun to do as well. Um, Just, it's, it's something like you just, you get inspiration. I look at photographs, I get inspiration of how I want things to look. And then it's, it's a play thing. You just, you play and you take into consideration what other people are wanting them to look like and of course what pascal would want and uh we go from there and and that's how it all turned out turned out great i'm i'm really proud of it it was really beautiful thank you the halloween looks like danine and i were like ooh, like we were just like so excited because it was like oh my goodness like and of course like to see rosemary as like other characters it's like the perfect like scenario like rosemary playing these uh and of course, Pascal, like I'd come around the corner, I'd be like, oh, Juliet. And she'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> just no words, but it would be Rosemary. But as Juliet with like the long, beautiful hair and I got to do like rosy, glowy, like golds and pinks and have it look really innocent and very like, uh, you know, very cheruby. And um, that was really fun. And, and the Cleopatra, like Peter had such a specific, it was funny, he had such a specific look. I'm pulling up, you know, all my um, reference photos that I'm going to do my own twist on with the Cleopatra. And he's like, I really want wings. I want Cleopatra, but I I really want wings. And Peter's very, I love it. He's very, uh, he knows what he wants. And he, so he, and he really wants you to make sure that you understand and that you know which is great because there then there's no confusion but he was like I just I really want these the the black he's like not too much of the the blue or the turquoise but I really want the wings and I was like I got it Peter I got you (laughs) so 
well, I was doing the like the makeup trial and, and the um, actually a funny moment uh, with the Cleopatra. So originally when we were in the chair, uh, Jill was getting uh, the hair situated and we were kind of tag teaming Pascal because we we're like, let's just like play around with this and we'll, we'll get it out. So I did, uh, I darkened her, her brows quite dark almost black and we almost like were on the floor laughing like because it was before it was before the hair was on and everything and she was like Pam like this is just their never the homework is never gonna go for this I'm like hear me out we gotta we gotta see this through we gotta see this so we didn't end up doing the brows that dark but we were taking or she was taking selfies and like sending to her husband and like we were just dying of laughter because it was like it was just so strong we're not, I'm not used to well no one's used to seeing it like that and then with the wing makeup um we had some we had definitely some some fun with it with with that so it was a, it's always good to play around with storyline and looks because it's I think they have fun too you know yeah. it's fun doing it all together that's for sure yeah, I can imagine getting those script pages. You guys are probably like kids at Christmas with getting oh, yeah. new things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Regular day and not costumes involved. How long do the women usually take for hair? Uh, for hair, they're usually, we'd like to say 30 minutes. Um, some are a bit longer. Pascal takes me about 45 minutes. So in order to do her hair, I have to set her whole hair and then she goes to makeup to Pam and then Pam will do her makeup and then she'll come back to me and I'll brush her out and then I style it. So I would say Pascal probably takes me an hour to do her hair every day, but the rest of the girls, we try to keep it around 30 to 40 minutes um, just because we have really early mornings. And uh, you know, when you have like 23 cast members coming in, you don't, you want to make sure that you get everyone in, in a timely fashion and you don't want to keep people waiting and, so we, we really do, we call it the dance and we really mm -hmm. sort of budget those times to help coordinate when people should be brought in. And, um, and, and Pam is, she's a rock star and, and Deneen just like, they're so efficient and so fast. It's amazing what they can do to just kind of pump people out. And we feel like, we feel like we're on like one of those like machines where it's just like this, like revolving door of people going in and out and uh so we really we work do quickly. a time lapse video in your in your trailer and just watch them coming and going that That's would be really true. cool that would that. be cool one day to see that see would all be, the yeah. <laughs> i'm just really about. shocked at the 30 to 40 minutes i mean some of those hairstyles are just yeah. amazing they're so oh, stunning and thank you you all are amazing yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah. Um, i can't so i can't do without jody 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 does so much with that too she's just her all of her years of experience she really like just like oh yeah whip it up it's we don't, <laughs> no we don't have time for that let's just do it quick so it's great so jill talking about pascal again um that's really great about the cleopatra look but when we had her on the um, podcast. She really talked about working with you and the team back when she first kind of came on the show and when Pascal Rosie, I should say, was finding her look and how, you know, she's so over the top and theatrical. And, and I'd love to hear more about how the team kind of created her look to kind of match that big personality. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's sort of a long sort of thing that just sort of evolved over time. What really happened at, when I came on in season three, um, because Pascal is a lot of hair, it's a lot of maintenance. So you have to like really, that's why it takes me so long to do her in the morning because I really need to have her set and ready to go. Otherwise, um, you know, the hair will fall out, the curl will fall out. So it takes, takes that time to do that. Um, and over the years, I had just kind of seen things um, – on how things are done and, and, and learning about her hair and how it, it does in the elements. And it sort of kind of started from there. And then I just talked to her about it. We chatted about like, you know, like you said, Rosemary's very like out there, you know, she does her thing. She's very 
flamboyant and and just so much personality and I was like I wanted that to reflect in her hair so I was like it's got to be big it's got to be like whoa whoa like she's you know going to New York City and you know like just going for tea or something like I want it to look like your her her jewel toned clothes and I just want everything to match nicely so I started you know quaffing it crazy and she was like oh the higher the better yes so uh yeah, that's just kind of how it started, and um, and and then over the years, it, I I played with the hair a bit, you know, just styling it in different ways and what worked best for the character, and and we found a niche, and we just it connected really. <laughs> so I, I you know I I'm really happy with how it turned out, and um, you know it, it it is a collaboration, you know, with anything. It's me having to talk to not just the actors, but also everyone behind the scenes as well to make sure that everyone's happy. And, and first and foremost, I want to make sure Pascal was happy too. So it was great. It was a great way to combine everything together. And, and uh, I, re- I love it. I love her look. Honestly, I always say this every time I do her hair, I'm always like, it's just so satisfying when I'm brushing it out. And I'm like, I just love brushing your hair out after I've said it. It's so it's just, the hair all flows together. And I'm like, I just love this part. It's just the best. So, <laughs> so good so well we have to thank pascal and it was actually i think a result of that story that she was like have you had jill and pam on you have to have jill and pam on <laughs> and so because she did you know say you guys were so instrumental in in rosie's look so a special thank you to pascal for making that happen too. yeah that's, that's really sweet that she mentioned us she's she's so great she's just so lovely to work um, with elise miller one of our younger hardies from michigan um she aspires to be a makeup artist herself and she mm-hmm. wonders, uh, do you keep a makeup and hair kit for each actor with the products that works best for them? Or kind of how does that work? Yeah, every cast member has actually their own. You'll see us lugging around all those clear set bags. So each actor has their, their own bag. So with their name and their character name. And there's all the uh, little compartments in the front and the back. So you get your uh, like your Q-tips, your mints, your tooth flossers, your tissue, your lip balms, your lipsticks. Um, and so each bag carries your their own brush set because um, we only use our own, uh, their own brushes on them. Uh, hand sanitizer for between uh, each cast member. So that was another thing with our COVID protocol that, you know, things take a little longer because there's another there's a little bit of an extra layer um, with other things that um, we have set up in the bags. So yeah, everybody has their own special thing. If they have eye drops that they need or uh, personal items, like sometimes I'll pull out like funny things from their bags that they're like, oh, can you hold on to this? Like a half eaten granola bar or like a uh, <laughs> a piece of like bubblicious gum or uh, I remember like it was Lori I remember Lori was had her bubblicious gum in there and I'd be like I smell grapes or I smell <laughs> straw like I can't and then I would oh I would unzip her bag at a point in the day and I'd be like it's full of bubble gum like and we would have a laugh or uh, Aaron's orange tic tacs uh, and then Sometimes I'll, I'll tap out the Tic Tacs and she'll get more than one. And she, it's like, she's gotten this special prize. She's like, oh, two. Oh, Pammy. And then has her little uh, Tic Tacs. And I'm like always shaking my head because I'm like, that's all it takes is two orange Tic Tacs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so we have these funny things or, or gum. Sometimes uh, Jack will have, uh, what did he have in there? It was something from Crafty. I think it was like these, it was some sort of um, fruit leather or something like that. And it was chewy. And he was like, I'm going to be chewing the rest of this through this whole scene. And we had this funny moment because I'm like throwing out a fruit bar. Like it just, it became, I was like, you guys, these aren't lunch packs. So we, yeah. had, a, <laughs> we had a funny little moment this year, but yeah, they have everything in there, but um it's all their own supplies, their their makeup looks for the show and then any makeup changes. Um and then we have separate effects bags for uh you know our when our we have any explosions you'll notice or um muddy days or dirty days or 
even wet days, we have special water we use. We have special gels that uh, stay on the skin longer that um, make the skin look wet instead of like spraying people down when it's cold out. It gives the illusion of, um, of, of rain or moisture or tears um, sometimes, just depends. But yeah, they all have their own special setup for sure. Really interesting. And we all remember the famous gum wars of what was that season five between Lori and Aaron? Yes. <laughs> season six. Yes, know. that's probably during this yeah. time period, actually. Uh, but yeah, I remember that in the glove box, right? And then in yeah. the trailer. Uh, yeah, I think I remember the that. Dueling videos between the two of them. All I should have took a video of the of the bag, actually. Yes. And yeah. been like, why am I involved in this? <laughs> <laughs> how did I get roped into this yeah <laughs> too funny too good well talking about the special effects a little bit over the years there's been like some injuries in Hope Valley or people are like you said muddy and things like that or mm -hmm. if they have to look ill like we've seen with Jack Wagner this season um mm -hmm. from a makeup standpoint what does that how does that work for you does it change well does it make it a lot more complicated how does it I honestly like it because I like uh, any sort of changes of uh, different things and to see like the, the character go through that um, and the actor, it's always an interesting time because it's something different. Um, they basically, it's always like having it on the line of showing, showcasing an injury or that something's happened but not being too gory with uh, keeping it hallmark as much as we can, right? Like they don't want anything too, uh, too bad, too, too disruptive. So, and based on what happens. So we always kind of are careful with um, our directors and I sort of, everything that we do in the makeup department, we, we have approved or we go through the director for the level of what, um, how they want the, the injury to be. Um, or the mud to be or and that's our own continuity too so we Jill and I will consult with our scripty Anita she's amazing and we'll say well okay they came from here and and then she can she can go through and say well that would probably have been let's say three hours ago so then we kind of know that like they could have you know wiped their hands or what or um, washed their their hands or got been home for a while so we kind of try with continuity to to match everything that you would have a realistic timeline of of certain things um as far as uh yeah like dirt or, or injuries or time in the bed like with our mounty like uh from when from when the car accident was until you know a few days later when he's eating ice cream so we're, we're showing them uh we're showing things getting better but as far as like bill uh, normally we just sort of, um, take, take the color out of the face a little bit. Like if it's a lighter foundation, if we knock out the lip color a little bit with, um, honestly, like a little bit of foundation just to, to show that, um, there's, or like no concealer or, um, lighten up anything that sort of can sell it just with that. So we, we and we just want to be careful with, having it look too, yeah, definitely too, too bad, but still try and stay on the storyline for sure. If Hallmark, that Hallmark sense. friendly injuries and illness <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, we have another question from a Hardy and all of us Hardys can relate to the, the struggles of, um, frizzy hair. Jen and I are looking at each other because we always talk about the frizz, the frizz <laughs> or keeping our makeup fresh in the weather. Uh, Rachel Huxtable from New Zealand. Um, she thinks you rock all the outfits you wear to protect from the elements, <laughs> which I thought was really cute. I noticed oh. Jill has her like signature plaid behind her today. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I had to put it in somehow. Oh, nice. yeah, I it's a staple. <laughs> uh, I saw that right away. I was like, oh, the signature plaid. Um, <laughs> yeah, so good. Uh, but tell us about working in the elements. Um, We've had the thunderstorm picnic with Elizabeth, which was, you know, so you're dealing with someone with hair in the rain or, or the, you know, the almost kiss with like, how do you deal with the makeup when there's that much water involved? And that's a lot. Of, 
a lot going on. We brief the ADs or the ADs will brief us. And we basically just have to say, uh, we're, we might need a little bit more time with resetting today because we're, we're matching scenes and sometimes like the rain doesn't go exactly where you, you think it might go. But, you know, we'll, we will do like a waterproofing mascara, which I wouldn't normally use on the daily just because I do find it's a little bit harder to, to take off every day. So, um, but like, like a, a, a foundation primer, I think goes a long way and a setting spray. Um, so we do have our, our little uh, arsenal of tricks that we, we try to like, you know, try to, and like I said earlier, the gels, the like, they're kind of, they're called a sweat gel, but it kind of lingers on the skin. So it, it's, um, it's almost like an aloe vera kind of consistency, but it gives the illusion of moisture without having to like soak the skin. Um, it kind of sits on the skin and then we can maybe mist it with um, an Evian water spray. So it's a little bit more um, controlled in that way. So there is a few tricks that we can use. Um, but yeah, like when we had our, our car scene, we had rain towers that day. And I had to run in because, you know, a drop would fall like on Chris or on Aaron, like right in like a specific spot where it would be distracting, right? Uh, so as when our DOP would be there, he said, we got to cut or we got to get makeup in. So I'd have to zip in and, you know, get it out of the area that was like maybe distracting for the scene. Um, as you know, when we hold on, on the faces, if anything is like kind of too funny or like, like Jill can attest, like if a, if a hair is, you know, based on continuity, like we have to, we have to kind of get in there and, and fix those things as we, if we can. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because especially I'm thinking to that specific scene, there were so many close-ups of their faces and yeah, you know, yeah just yeah. one raindrop that wasn't there a second ago and Hardy's are like, exactly. what's that going on there? Yeah, or it'll like drip down from the hair or something like that and then it could look like a tear, like they, it could change the scene totally if you're catching it at the wrong moment. So, um, but yeah, we're just there. We're watching monitors. Like we have our own uh, video village, we, it's called. So we watch uh, all our every take and we adjust as necessary and we um, try to you know maintain our continuity as best we can um, and watch them yeah and keep keep them close very cool well mm -hmm. hard to know you guys not only from when calls the heart but you've also both done a lot of movies with our the actors from the show which is very cool i think you worked on all the finding or the father christmas movies with aaron and it was always you we saw you on. And then I think you did. Did you do a perfect ride with Pascal and Kevin? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So fun. Do you have any fun memories from any of those movies specifically or anything fun stories from set? Um, yes, actually, um, when we shot It Was Always You, we were on Vancouver Island. And so both me and Pam don't live there. So we got put up in the hotel, the same hotel as Aaron, which was so fun. So every evening after work, like depending on how late we would go, you know, we would come over and we would just chat for a little bit. And she was always like a team player. Like if I was like being like, oh, I'm going to go over to Pam's or Pam's going to come over to my place. And she'd be like, okay, I'm coming. And be like, oh, well, you, you know, you, you gotta, I, I don't have to be on camera tomorrow. So, I mean, I totally understand if you want to go to sleep and get some, rest. oh, no, 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 I'll come. And so she would come and we would play sometimes card games and she'd be like, so sort of like this, like when I open playing cards, like just, just trying to stay awake, just, you know, having fear of missing out, you know, some good times. So she would always be there for that. And that, that's a fond memory I have. Um, yeah, I feel like there was a photo of her fun. sleeping at one point, wasn't there? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. 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 So she didn't quite make it that night. but No. <laughs> um, and then with um, A Perfect Bride, I think it was... Uh, um, Pascal and Kevin, I did Perfect Bride 2, and mm -hmm. me and Pam decided to, every day of shooting, that we would wear the same colors or the same clothes to see who would notice. <laughs> and so people would make subtle comments being like, oh, did you guys, like, plan this? And we go, oh, no, we just, I don't know, I don't get it. We just show up and we're wearing the same thing. You know, I just, great minds think alike. So, you know, uh, 
and they would always comment about it. So we was it was the day that we were shooting their big wedding scene, and um, we decided that we would dress up for the occasion. So <laughs> we wore the same thing, and then I was like, well, we gotta we gotta spice it up a bit because we've been doing this every day. And so I was like, Pam, let's take all the sparkly barrettes I have, and we'll put them all over our hair, and we'll go to set like that. And you know, and so it was really funny. We we, we went to set, and uh, Greg, our producer, was didn't really an, a know like how to take us, like. Is this for real? Like, is this a new do? Or, and so we joked with him quite a bit, and he laughed and thought it was pretty funny. So those like little funny, you know, anecdotes that happen in these movies, like there's there's a thousands of them. Um, you know, we have such a close relationship, so it's hard to pick just one, but that that is one memory that's great. Um, I was just thinking about Victoria when we were doing Aaron's movie with Tyler and. Uh, we finished when calls and we went um, basically straight to Victoria, which took us really close to Christmas. Mm. And Jill is, I was telling the ladies earlier, is obsessed with Christmas. Uh, this is her time. She's like decorating every mantle she can get her hands on, baking every goodie. Like you open the fridge and like just blocks of butter fall out. Like you, you can't even... <laughs> find uh you know any juice it's just like butter and vanilla in there and um and decor and uh and everything that you can think of with Christmas so my husband knew that Jill was going during this time this peak time this three-week Christmas uh pre-time so he bought her this little Christmas tree that was decorated for her hotel room and so when we were filming, Jill's house or Jill's apartment became our Christmas apartment. So she had it decorated. She had the pine needle uh, candles. She had bowls of candy and treats and chips and ciders and hot chocolates. And so uh, that's a fond memory is, yeah, like Aaron and me would come over to Jill's probably most nights and we would have our little uh, decompressing time in Jill's Christmas house. Um, usually a, a Christmas movie, like honestly playing in the background. And that was a really special time because we, it didn't feel like we missed out on too much Christmas. Like we had our own special times and we came back and we were refreshed and uh, we didn't feel like we, we missed that like good buildup to Christmas, I would say. Aww. So that was a fun, fun moment. Um, and Kevin and Pascal, they're just honestly like, what you see is what you get. They're just a hoot. So we never, we always are like making fun of each other or Kevin or, <laughs> or uh, this goes back to Treatland. We were on this kick of uh, discovering every different bakery in Vancouver. So we would bring boxes of treats basically like once a week so we would and we actually like were taking this job quite seriously where we would be judging the croissants or the um oat bars that we discovered that were really good I mean well Pascal and I is favorite and so we were like going to these different places and like we'd bring in these different treats and we had uh fun moments of like okay we're uh, on week three and now we've got three treat days a week, not one, not just the one treat day. So we had, we learned uh, some really good bakeries all around town on that shoot. <laughs> How fun. And those films usually are just like about three weeks, right? So yeah. it's probably just like, yeah, yeah. Fun three weeks together as a family kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And like Jill said, we're so comfortable and, uh, it's fun also when we get to do these side projects, it feels like, because when calls is on, like you know it's it's time sort of specific and so when we get to do like real life or uh, real time mm -hmm. it's it's a fun and see them in a different character it's always like an interesting uh it kind of feels like there should be Jamestown around us and then there's not we're like on a you know a current set so it's fun it's good to work out those muscles and and have fun with with them in other ways and we're, we're so lucky to be part of it Cool. Well, Hardys love to see their cast in any other movies, so that's always fun for us to be able to see that. 
Um, but we've got one more uh, when calls question from Nancy Payne of Gilbert, Arizona. Um, and it's about 1919 on our show right now. And it's on the verge of kind of the roaring 20s. And she's wondering how much of that style and influence is going to make its way into a small Western town. Um, and if we get a season 10, um, are we going to see any of that? Ooh, great question. I really hope that we can start to like be a little bit more playful with uh, with those moments that are like, you know, very, um, uh, you know, instrumental to the growth of the town and, and what's happening there. Um, I know there was a few moments with Pence and like we did get to see a few things like our the phone coming and I feel like hair and makeup, like the, it's, it's just a matter of time. Like we're already, we already have some like art, like our glam established, which, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy for that. So I feel like uh, we'll see what the writing brings, honestly, like it's a good, I think I, I would love to have a play on, on some roaring twenties. Don't get me wrong. What about, what's the hair like in the 20s, Jill? Have you looked at that at all? <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of it's bobs and bangs. Oh, oh wow. So, uh, <laughs> like, sort of like kind of finger waves. They're really short. So, I mean, that would be amazing if they would go for that. I, the likeliness of that is probably slim, but um, <laughs> there might be some takes on things for sure that they might want to add in here and there. And I would, I think that's fantastic. I, yeah. I, I hope so, honestly. Um, any way that we can sort of add, you know, me and Pam can add, or Jody Deneen, and a twist on the hair and makeup of what we normally do, it's always so fun. And it, it just, it puts it, it puts like our kind of job out there a bit more, and it's more of a storyline. So that's always so much fun for us, because we, you know, it's, it's, it's enjoyable to create those moments. Well, before we wrap up, I think we're getting close to the end, but I, I'm putting you guys on the spot here, but I feel like Hardee's would be upset with us if we didn't ask both of you, like, what's your one go-to makeup product that, that you Ooh. like to use? I feel like they'd be like, why did you guys not ask them that? We need to know the good, the good stuff. <laughs> Honestly, uh, for the, for the girls? Uh, or either. for the cast or for you or, you know. One for each, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I would say one of my staples in my kit for the girls and for our um, for yeah for the ladies is our. Uh, it's something that I love and I use all the time, and I think it works, and they're happy with. It's actually Burt's Bees, the tinted lip balm. There's like five or six different shades, and it's hydrating. It doesn't like dry out the lips. That's like a staple in my kit for sure. And then we, we, I think I would say mascara is my desert island. Like I, I feel like I have no eyes unless I have mascara or I feel like I, I need my mascara to uh, feel like the best version of myself. That and tinted sunscreen. I do my mineral sunscreen. Um, those are like my go-tos. So I think uh, a good tinted sunscreen uh, a little bit of a, a nice lip balm, mascara, even a brow gel. I'm getting carried away. No, we love it. Um, Hardy's will love that stuff. <laughs> uh, cream blush, like cream blush. Um, that's a really good thing for uh, for longevity, I would say, like when you're talking about humidity earlier. So we do primer and we do um, a tinted blush. We do like your foundation or your bit of concealing with the girls. And then our, our powder and our, uh, our, we can add the other blush on top, but that cream base gives like a really nice underglow to the skin and keeps the skin like youthful and healthy looking. Um, that I find has just been a really, really good tool for um, my makeup kit. When I see it, when I see the difference on camera, I really, I really appreciate a good cream blush underneath. Nice. Yeah. What about for you, Jill? Signature product that you like? Oh, that's <laughs> a hard one. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of, I mean, having a really good hairspray is very important. Um, not one that 
adds crispiness, but something that adds more movement to the hair, which is, it's a fine line. It definitely mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, especially with Pascal's hair, like uh, when I do hers, I use a special kind of hairspray so that I change her looks quite often. So during the day, I might change her look five times. So I would have to kind of brush it out and then recurl certain spots that have kind of fallen. And then I would style it the way I want to style it for the next show day on, on, when we're shooting. Mm. So I'd say a hairspray is a big staple for the women, for sure. I mean, on the show. Um, in my daily life, I would say a really good leave-in conditioner. So uh, a lot of people who, you know, hair gets really naughty when you get out of the shower. I mean, I don't like to leave conditioner in my hair. It's just, I don't like the feeling of it. So I always rinse it all out. And then um, I use a leave-in so that I'm not, I'm I'm a bit hard on my own hair. Everyone always is hard on their own hair. So you're brushing it and you're like, oh, I just want to get this done and I want to get going kind of thing, right? So um, a really good leave-in conditioner helps with that. For men, I would say a pomade is always great and something that's matte. I would say um, a lot of the time with guys, they don't want to look like they have wet hair. So, um, the mat really does help with that. And it's a, I find, I always have that in my kit and I have different types and kinds of, of, uh, of companies that carry those. Mm -hmm. So, and they usually always say, oh, I use this or, oh, I use that. And I go, oh, I have it. <laughs> and so I bring it out and they're like, oh, I can't believe you have it. I'm like, I got a large selection here because, <laughs> you know, I want to make sure I got it all handy. So, um, I would say for men, definitely a mat, a mat cream, I think would be helpful mm -hmm. very cool well thanks for sharing that everywhere hardies are like yeah. scribbling notes right now like yeah. <laughs> what do i need for my kids <laughs> thank you ladies so much for taking your time to share with us and just giving us your time today to tell the hardies all the tea about the hair and the makeup we appreciate it i look forward to uh i look forward to the next season maybe <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I know. Every time oh. we say season 10, every single interview, we're like, please, please. <laughs> thank you ladies for all you do. And thank you for the hearties. We wouldn't be here without you guys. So cheers to you. Thanks. Bye everybody. Bye hearties.